From the Daystrom Institute to Picard's office as the next generation museum and to Raffi's search for the Red Lady, there are a ton of awesome Easter eggs in the season 3 premiere of Star Trek Picard. Starting with Picard's log from the best of both worlds and some Romulan ale. Just as Beverly wakes up to the fact that an attack is coming, we hear the part of Picard's captain's log from the best of both worlds, where he talks about hiding the Enterprise in a dust cloud. Now, this lies as a hint that Riker and Picard will go into a nebula at the end of this episode. And then, moving on, we also see a glass of Romulan ale, which is a blue liquid sitting on a table. Remember when Bones told us about Romulan ale for the first time in The Wrath of Khan? Well, this shows that Enterprise doctors have always had good taste in space drinks. This brings us to It's Been a Long Time. Riker and Picard talk about Frontier Day, which is a celebration of boldly going for 250 years. This isn't the Federation's birthday, since it's a little bit younger than Starfleet. And in the last few seconds of the Enterprise episode, These Are the Voyages, we saw that the Federation was formed in 2161. But Starfleet was around many years before the Federation, and Picard Season 3 takes place around 2402. Doesn't this tell you that Starfleet Starfleet is celebrating something that happened in the first year of the NX-01 Enterprise, which was either 2151 or 2152. Interesting, is it not? Oh, well, there's no way you would have missed this next one, Daystrom Institute. Raffi can't stop thinking about what was taken from a Daystrom station that wasn't on the same property. This question will turn out to be one of the most important MacGuffins in Picard Season 3, but you might be wrong even if you think you know what it is. Anyway, Dr. Richard Daystrom, played by William Marshall in the TOS episode, The Ultimate Computer, is where the word Daystrom comes from. In that episode, we learned that most of the computers on Starfleet ships were designed by the company. And in the first season of Picard, the Daystrom Institute on Earth was at the center of the story, and it was there that Dr. Gerardi was introduced. The body of B4, Data's twin brother from Nemesis, was kept at the Daystrom Institute at that time. This reminds me, Captain Shaw hates Jazz, Riker, and Picard. Todd Stashwick plays Captain Liam Shaw, which is a bit of a nod to the show 12 Monkeys, where he played Deacon. Don't lose track of him. Anyway, he says that he doesn't like Jazz, which is a jab at Riker, who's loved playing Jazz trombone since the TNG episode 11001001. In fact, Shaw also makes it clear that he doesn't like Picard and Riker. He talks about their wildly exciting and equally irresponsible adventures, which could mean a lot of different things. But his joke about crash landing is probably a direct reference to Generations, when the Enterprise D crashed on Viridian 3. But hey, if you didn't notice that, then no worries, because this next Easter egg was impossible to miss. Picard's office is a The Next Generation Museum. Like in past seasons of Star Trek Picard, Jean-Luc's home in La Barre, France, has several items that Trekkies will recognize. And some of these things get extra attention in the scene where Picard and his girlfriend, Laris, do some spring cleaning. First, he thinks about giving Geordi LaForge and the Starfleet Museum the big painting of the USS Enterprise D, the one that used to hang in his ready room in the next generation. And right below it, on the mantle, is a that might be from Picard's quarters. Other than that, the Who Watches the Watchers, Min Takin Tapestry, that used to hang over his chair on both Enterprises, still hangs behind his desk chair at home. And there's a memento from the Bajorans, a gold model of both the Enterprise D and the Enterprise E, and his Resican flute from the Inner Light. This may be the most valuable of all his mementos, because it's the only thing he has left from his life on the planet Catan, which has been dead for a long time. Later, he sits handwriting a note on his table. The Curlin Nascos, a valuable archaeological artifact that was a gift from his mentor, Professor Galen. The authorization code that Picard uses to read Beverly's message is Picard 47 Alpha Tango. This is the same security code that he uses in Star Trek First Contact to start the self-destruction sequence on Enterprise E. Oh, and 
I can't believe I almost forgot. Rafi's search for the Red Lady is its own Easter egg hunt. When he asked the computer to list all the big events coming up in the next few months, this is a pretty silly request. Given that we're talking about the whole galaxy, it only gives him three results. The Deep Space Nine episode, Fascination, was the first time the Gratitude Festival, a Bajoran holiday, was shown. Empire Union Day is a Klingon holiday that was only mentioned in a 19 1993 audio tape called Power Klingon, which was part of a series of books and tapes about the Klingon language by its creator, linguist Mark Okrend. This is about as deep a reference as you can get. It's been out of print for a long time, and only people who studied the language remember it. Rafi finds out about the Red Lady from her contact on Metallus. It turns out that it's a code name for a statue that's being unveiled at a Starfleet recruitment center. The statue is a tribute to Captain Rachel Garrett, who was in charge of the USS Enterprise-C. She only appeared in the episode Yesterday's Enterprise of the Next Generation. Garrett dies in battle while trying to help a Klingon colony that is being attacked by Romulans. Garrett and her crew's sacrifice prevented decades of war, making this a more important moment in history than it seemed. What's more? Well, during this scene, you can also see pictures of a few starships which have never been seen in canon before, like the Odyssey class USS Enterprise F, which was made by fans of the video game Star Trek Online. This brings us to the last Easter egg, but this one might have made you sit down and pause for a bit. The show's credits are loaded with hints and references. If you've watched them, then you'd know that even the end credits of Star Trek Picard have a few Easter eggs, although some of them don't make sense until later in the season when they're explained. So, as as not to give anything away, I'll only talk about one, which doesn't need any background knowledge to understand. Under the names of the co-executive producers, a few musical staves are briefly circled. It's a melody in the key of D major with 6-8 time. If you can read music, you might recognize this tune as Pop Goes the Weasel. Trek fans will remember that this is the song that Data is trying to whistle when Will Riker first meets him in Encounter at Farpoint. In Star Trek Nemesis, after Data's death, Riker remembers this moment with a lot of love. There's also the music that plays during the credits. It's Jerry Goldsmith's theme from Star Trek First Contact, which is the most popular of the Next Generation movies. And it ends with Goldsmith's tried and true Star Trek main title fanfare. Just like at the end of that movie, after the animated credits are done, the final set of closing credits is shown in the same blue font as the credits for Star Trek The Next Generation. The credits of Star Trek Lower Decks, which is also a lot like The Next Generation, were written in this same font. So guys, that's all for the best Star Trek Easter eggs in the Picard Season 3 premiere.